Hi, welcome back. Cambridge Inside Out, segment two. Okay. Robert yeah. Winters, Judy Nathans. <laughs> I bet all so, I will say. <laughs> in the first half hour, we talked about just some of the public meetings that have been going on yes, here. and that Robert you know, attends. Lesson learned. Yeah. I don't attend all of them, but you, I do. But most you seem to know a lot. I, I, well, I, I do try and keep a kind of a calendar of yeah. all the upcoming events. It's and, important. You know, it originally started just my wanting to know which, you know, just as a, like a jotting down notes about sort sure. of reminder to self. And then I right. said, well, might as well put this up for other people too. Yes. So um, another thing it's we do have the last city council meeting of the term of is coming okay. up on the 21st, which okay. is next Monday. Right. Uh, and, you know, these, it'll be actually be the last uh, meeting for Dennis Benson as a city councilor. Oh, that's right. So, you know, with, uh, and uh, Jan Devereaux will take a seat at the inaugural meeting on January 4th right. when we come back. Uh, there are a few business items of some significance that are uh, on the agenda for this Monday. Um, arguably, one of the bigger ones is actually just resolving one of the many moving pieces of the Kendall Square puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think the Volpe... Uh, zoning petition is going to be happening anytime soon, so we won't even concentrate yeah. on that so much because that's just too complicated. Yes. But the MXD district, which includes the, uh, you know, five Cambridge Center, the one where Google is, oh, you know, okay. doing, you know, doing th doing their right. things, uh, Aim Street cuts through the middle of it all. There's a proposal to change the zoning to uh, incentivize some housing, and. The city councils didn't seem to have the votes because they said we wanted to get more, a higher percentage of affordable housing uh, mm. requirement. I think the inclusionary zoning is 15%, but by the time you then add the bonus housing, it actually drops down below 12% mm -hmm. ac actual affordability, or, or by affordable, we should say subsidized affordable, because mm -hmm. that's not quite the same as but just having Just let me clarify, rent. when you say that, does it mean it has to be within that area or just contribute to the housing fund? It has to be area? within the structures. This is very different it, than how it's oh, done okay. in Boston. In Boston, you have, for the way they do uh, uh, some of these incentive zoning, yeah. Arrangements is you can either build the affordable units or you can throw Contribute money into the, the bucket and then and it's built do, elsewhere. We don't have a fund. I thought we did I think, have a fund. Um, I we have other funds, affordable but housing trust, and uh, developers can't put. Yeah, I there's thought in, there was there's some an in, there's a uh, incentive, incentive zoning uh, linkage money that comes into a oh, fund. Okay, but, so but that, there are other ways to get affordable housing. Yeah, but the, the, the best way to get affordable housing is actually to have the developer build to it. Build it, right. So, right. and also you, this way you integrate, uh, different economic classes together, right. which is really the strange, better goal. I know, but Kendall? Mm. Well, I know, I, I, you know, that's the thing I about this is that, yeah, that. well, when people, people <laughs> talk about, we want to put in, we're going to yeah. insist there must be family sized yeah. units of housing in Kendall. Where? I, I really? say to myself, yeah. is that really where a person with a family yeah, with several wanna kids want to yeah, be? Really? I, I, you know, this is probably yeah. an unspeakable thing to say, but say it. you know, I think it would be better <laughs> sometimes just let the t the young techies do their thing in Kendall Square yeah. and then find a way to then fund building more exactly. family style housing and, and or other preserving places that make more sense. Yeah, places where people would really yeah. want to be with a family. So. Now, I don't know, maybe I'm completely misreading this. Maybe it's uh, not an option at all. Well, I mean, the thing is, if you build enough really great open space in there, maybe yeah. it'll be kind of a cool place for kids. Yeah. Uh, I'm not so sure, though. Um, sometimes it's sort of a political decision. You sure. know, we're, we really are so concerned about having family-sized housing yeah. that we're going to insist it be built here where families don't want to live. Yeah. Uh, but I... nobody asks the families. It's not like we had a similar or a comparable situation where people were insisting I'm putting uh, massive amounts of graduate student housing in Kendall Square as part of the MIT zoning. Right. Now, to some degree, I think that's exactly right. Yeah. But there are also a lot of graduate students who, A, don't want to live on campus, and B, don't want to necessarily live right in the middle of Kendall Square, would right. rather live more on the fringe, uh, you, you know, a little right. more quiet area. Right. Um, but nobody ever asked them. You yeah. know, it's just like, you know, we, we as elected officials have to demonstrate mm -hmm how much we care about solving this graduate student housing dilemma. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody asked the graduate students. I think that's kind of ridiculous. So right. I'd like to ask the families, where do you want to live? Mm -hmm. uh, and let that guide some of the policy making. And I'm not so sure that's really done. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I noticed on the agenda for the Cambridge Redevelopment Authority, which is shepherding the MXD district rezoning through, 
uh, their meeting uh, Wednesday night, I think, okay. um, is actually they're bumping up the affordable housing uh, provisions to pretty much match, I think, oh. what the city councilors were really? saying they demanded. So I, when I looked at that and I said, if that's going to be in the package, yeah. I predict that come this Monday, the city council is going to we'll pass, pass it. That. That's interesting. But meanwhile, the Cambridge Residents Alliance and are they the, against it? They they put out a letter. I read it this morning oh. on one of the listservs, uh, yeah. saying why why this should be, this can should be kicked down the road further until at least late spring. Um, huh. I suspect that's because they'll have one more Cambridge Residents Alliance affiliated city councilor, so they'll try and oh. leverage things, but. You know, basically, I think actually Councilman Mazin is the one who said at the last meeting, uh, with a regular meeting, they yeah. said that, uh, in fact, everything that we asked them to do, they They've have done. done. Yeah. And at this point, it would be kind of a breach of faith for us to mm. then just vote down after they've, in fact, right. responded to everything we've asked to do. And I completely agree. Huh. Wow. So, so I figure that one will likely get pass. Passed. Okay. We'll see what happens. There's also yeah. the Barrett petition. Right. That at least that a portion of that could be passed, though that's not facing a yeah, deadline. Definitely look at Robert's <clears throat> from last week. Very definitely good, with Patrick. Yeah, with Patrick. Yeah. Very good explanations. Yeah. So. But the um, but the deadline for the MXD district is the twenty second of December, so they could refile it. But Which honestly, it, it? it would just be foolish to do yes. it. I, I really think they should just settle it it's and a move nice on. Christmas gift for them. Yeah, yeah well, right. Um, so so anyway, that's what's coming yeah, up. Vardis is right down <coughs> the street here. Yeah, some other things, interesting things happened around town. You know, there were zoning petitions passed, um, arguably up zonings, um, that responded to the down zonings of 10 years earlier along places like the stretch of Mass Ave from Central mm -hmm. Square toward MIT. Uh, so they restored some of the permissible heights uh, and densities for some structures. The first was the Novartis building. Now, there's mm -hmm. the Novartis building that took over the old NECO plant. Right. Uh, and and they've done a lot of great. They're still doing renovations there, um, but then they've built this. I think the architect was Maya Lin. Who, yes, who, very famous. And, and uh, I just saw the Vietnam War Memorial. She did at twenty one. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. so now this is this a uh, this is a bit of a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Some of it's a little strange, but yeah, it's it's very. It, but I it's like it. it's yeah. been interesting watching it develop, and now it's it's yeah. really nearing completion. Uh, they had a major, a big ribbon cutting ceremony for the elected officials last week for all the landscaped, uh, publicly oh. accessible portion of the, the new Novartis campus there. Um, and I, I've been walking, I've been actually going talking to the construction guys going, nice job, guys. <laughs> um, you know, it's really looking beautiful. So that's Novartis across the street as well as the one? Yeah, same okay, company. Okay, so they have two buildings. They're going to have the two buildings there, yeah. Okay. Uh, and... The uh, I think I got that right because F and Pfizer is behind them, going over toward Main Street. But the old Neco, that's Novartis, yes. Yes, that's also okay. Novartis. Okay, so the new building, the Myelin Design one, is also Novartis. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So so, nice. so anyway, that's that's happening. There's mm -hmm. a, a number of streets, uh, that like um, Osborne and uh, I think another I forget which other street um, have been closed off because of all the construction and. Mm -hmm. Those are starting to show all the signs that they're actually going to be reopening soon. And honestly, the, just, just a little bit of extra road capacity wouldn't hurt yeah. right through there. Um, so that, it's interesting seeing that near completion. Mm -hmm. Pretty much across street at 300 Mass Ave, it was another subject of another big zoning, the extension of the Cambridge Port Redevelopment District, um, uh, basically the, far, the uh, University Park area yeah. got bumped all the way up to where it was originally supposed to come up to, right at the Mass Ave. And at 300 Mass Ave, they've been building a new facility for Millennium Takeda. Okay. Um, All right. Now I know. Yeah. Yeah. Visualize and, it. Yes. And it's both further the, down. Both yeah. the Novartis side, as well mm -hmm. as now at the 300 Mass Ave, has mm -hmm. ground floor retail, all like freshly renewed in there. Yeah. Um, I heard some really good good things coming, actually, oh, really? for the 300 Mass coming? Ave. There's a... Uh, there's a, a place that'll be eating. It will actually have things like, I heard, like pool tables and pinball machines. Oh, wow. Wow. I said, all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, one of the things that I yeah. really is my eternal gripe yeah. is that they build these fancy new buildings in Cambridge. And yeah. I'm not a, opposed to that. But then they, 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 they put in these kind of inaccessible 
cardboard uh, retail outlets for people with a lot of throwaway money and mm -hmm. not a lot of interest from ordinary people. So well, if, wait to see how much it costs to play pool, though. Well, I know. I, I, that, yeah. I agree. And, I, and again, I'm not swearing it's yeah. a pool table or anything. But, but something more, you know, user-friendly. Yeah. Or, Honestly, a class restaurant where you, you know, if you, you're yeah. getting most of your income for the building mm -hmm. for the upper floors anyway, right. the, the property owners could absolutely uh, uh, it make total sense for you to mm -hmm. allow that to uh, fund in yeah. part the uh, allowance of more affordable retail at the ground yeah. level. It would make a, the whole place a lot more popular and, mm -hmm. and it'll make the building owners a lot more popular too. Take yeah. my advice. Well, we'll see. <laughs> right, <clears throat> you know, give, I'll right. give some stuff for the rest of us. Yeah. So, anyway, it's 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 interesting. Maybe because they're just sort of rushing to get it all done before the winter sets in, mm -hmm. uh, if it ever sets in. <laughs> it's been really beautiful. Well, there's been lately. construction all over Cambridge because everyone. Yeah. Uh, and the road repairs. Absolutely. Everywhere, not just Cambridge. Both. But it's been it's been nice seeing some of these things finally yeah. kind of you know finishing Do you up. How many cranes there are around? Yeah. Well, the thing is, is we had Boston a in here, so. You know, yeah. the economy doesn't thrive on, uh, you know, lack of construction. So we, so we had you, a re when you see them and then you don't see them. We're seeing them a lot. So it's well, we had a recession and yeah. uh, and, now and now basically there's you know, money to be made, money yeah. to be invested. Mm -hmm. So to me, I, I kind of like seeing the cranes. No, <laughs> I'm not making a I, I, good or bad. I just know I've been noticing them a lot. Yeah, but yeah, it's, uh, so it's interesting. <clears throat> So another bit of big news, um, mm -hmm. it has to do with the Green Line. Oh, uh, right. The That's Green Line news. extension, and I, I, got, I, have, I have to admit I'm being, I've, I try and read about a lot of this, mm -hmm. but I'm just bewildered about the fact that uh, we could have gone down the road so far and yeah. people have been investing in, yeah. uh, in properties in Buying anticipation them, yeah. of a Green Line extension yeah. to places like Union Square and mm -hmm. other parts of Somerville. And then... Apparently, just too much money. State, yeah. But state officials must have like yeah. made up a bad estimate. Yeah. They were oh we only we're only off by a billion dollars. Is it off by a billion or is it came in? Oh, it's more than a billion. Something right? like that. I mean, it was just yeah. an astronomically wrong estimates yeah. on really bad. Uh, on on the construction what the actual construction of the Green Line would be. Yeah. So now they're pretty much canceling contracts and putting it all out to bid again. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, high-level officials uh, are kind of getting together and thinking through, like, what can we do now? Um, can we scale back certain things? Mm -hmm. Can we, I mean, I thought it would, might be something as simple as, as uh, uh, let's just hold off on some of the community path. We'll, we'll, we'll just put up huts instead of big fancy stations. After all, if you go out on the green oh, line... Oh, that's a good point. They don't have to... Yeah, if, if you go yeah. out to the Wobbin stop on the green yeah, line, it's, out at, there's, yeah. it's basically it's something you could build in a weekend. True. Um, so it doesn't you, have to be a big fancy station. It doesn't right? have to. You can always build the big or fancy build it so later. so that it can be expanded. Exactly. Yeah. So in anticipation when the money is available. But and then Baker said stuff about having Cambridge and Somerville. There's definitely been, talking yeah. about having municipalities and, 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 the, and the businesses yeah, that would perhaps benefit from having the, the transportation Where resources. Where does it end up? It goes to go West to Medford. It does go to, yeah. yeah. So it's I supposed think to go to West Medford. I mean, one option is, of course, don't build it all the way to the end, but I don't think that the, the, the outer yeah. stretches are really the hard part anyway. Yeah. I think it's more the, the, the close stuff. But they've already sunk a lot of money into know. it. So, it, you it's know, crazy. not doing it is kind of not an option the way I look at it. So they're going to just have to find a way. But to have miscalculated mm -hmm. this badly is just beyond yeah. belief. Um, yeah, but so the good. city manager at the transportation meeting last night was saying he was not uh, optimistic about this. He said he expected to hear today about mm -hmm. significant delays uh, in the ex uh, in our expansion, scale back stations maybe even sort of holding off on the Union Square branch, which is really kind of insane. What? Be that's like the whole point. <laughs> well, <laughs> to me it is. I mean, it seems like that's I mean, the I part think, that needs to have some... Well, that's where you see most of the obvious investment has been going on, yeah. other than at Leachmere, uh, Brick Bottom. Right. Uh, right. For Union Square, a potential branch, they cleared out the Prospect Iron and Steel yards. That's right. A lot of the other yards, they've been yeah. doing some sort of remediation in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and... You know, the, the, they created essentially a Somerville Redevelopment Authority with eminent domain power, I think. 
uh, basically to do land acquisition and clearing just in anticipation of the station that's supposed to happen right over where by Prospect Street. Uh, and now, what, is that going to get put off? I mean, it's just, you can't allow things to go this right. far only to have right. this bait and switch go on. It's just ridiculous. Um, so anyway, that's something I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to have to read up. Everybody's going to have to read up yeah. more on this because it's just bewildering yeah. how this has really yeah. uh, been developing. Well, it's the it's the MBTA, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, they don't have any money. They're cutting back on late night service. Did you see? I mean, did yeah. You see that? I, that's they're going to get rid yeah. of that. So who's that going to affect? All the workers <clears throat> that have no money to pay for Uber and all that stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just, I mean, the thing is, is this is just pretty necessary yeah. transportation yeah. infrastructure, and the fact that as a state we can't seem to get mm -hmm. our act together to to you know plan and fund these things appropriately is pathetic. Have you been to other cities? I mean, I was just in D.C. They have a pretty... They don't let me out of Cambridge, actually. Oh, okay. Metro system. Chicago, I think, has a good one. San Francisco. Yeah. Um, what's the, with us? The city manager gave Seattle. me an electronic bracelet. I'm not actually Light allowed rail, to leave the know. city. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could do more. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, stuck in our ways. So, anyway, that's big news. Okay. Uh, uh, so, the... Uh, one the other thing that, of course, has been happening since this is now, what, December 15th? Yes. So we have 16 more days in the year plus December 4th. So a few more days on top of that to the inaugural. So now is the time when all the city councilors are meeting in twos and threes and talking about who's going to be mayor. So they can do that. They can meet on their own. They don't have to meet. Yeah, you know, I'm sure there's some nitwit called. in town who's going to raise say, issue oh, and say, oh, it's a violation of the uh, open meeting Well, you can just meeting say it's law. an executive session, right? Honestly, executive some of the, you, there are good reasons why we have open meeting laws, right. but when people... So you can't communicate by email or right. that stuff. When people yeah. abuse yeah. the intention of the law in order yeah. to basically raise issues about whether city council are allowed to talk to each other mm -hmm. at all, that's just ridiculous. Yes. No, uh, I, uh, so, yeah. so I'm sure, you know, so, whether people like it or not, people are talking to each other. Uh, you know, I, last I heard, I think Denny Simmons might have four votes, maybe okay. a fifth. We'll see. It sounds like. Two uh, years ago. I, I understand Leland, just like two years ago, Leland yeah. Chung, you know, is, is uh, even though he told me he wasn't interested in it, apparently he's interested in it. And, he didn't uh, get much in the popular vote, <clears throat> right? Or the popular round. I know, I know, uh, I know. So, so what, is it possible they're going to choose somebody Monday night? It's possible. I think it's likely. Nice. I, I don't think that there's a um, whole lot of uh, uh, love for delaying this anymore. It's yeah. a real embarrassment. It makes yes. them all look silly. Yes. And it just all it does is sort of make things bad for months to go to come. Um, so I'm I'm inclined to believe that even if there's not on the first ballot, if there's not five votes for somebody, that that the five votes will materialize. Okay, let me ask a, a procedural question because I don't know if they don't decide, <clears throat> and then you have a new council coming in. Do they get to vote? Uh, what you mean? You're, For mayor. Oh, yeah, no, it's the nine new councillors are the ones who will make the decision. Oh, so, so they can't decide this, this the 20th. They can't oh, decide well, next week then. It can't be the old councillors? No, 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 no. No, it, it takes place at the inaugural meeting. Now, right, what, what yeah. happens, what has happened in the past is that people who are incumbents who are reelected plus new councillors yeah. who are not yet seated yeah. Do they talk to each other? And, oh, I didn't know and, that. Okay. And there have been years. I hasn't mean, it gone beyond the inaugural meeting where they? Oh, absolutely. Chosen? If they're not under any obligation to actually settle okay, it. Okay. So on what that. my question is, what happens to the <clears throat> vote of the person that is no longer on the council? He doesn't get to vote on that because okay. So another you have takes to place, keep getting resubmitted for voting. What happens is, is that the the first ballot will take place on January fourth. After they do oh, the swearing okay. in, it's the very first order of business. Okay. And okay. then, right. uh, and then, you know, then if the clerk, city clerk, who administers the, who basically yeah. officiates at the vote, uh -huh. um, if the striking of the gavel three times marks the end of the vote. Then they could call for a second ballot and a third ballot and a fourth ballot. They could continue doing ballot after ballot. Uh, what sometimes happens is that during one of those ballots, um, there'll be five votes on the table or, or maybe not. And then people mm -hmm. will, until the, until the gavel strikes, 
you can continue to change votes. So okay. someone, one, you know, if there's, let's say there's four votes for somebody and it doesn't yeah. look like anything's going to get resolved otherwise, yeah. somebody who had voted for Councillor B then turns and says, Madam City Clerk, how am I recorded? And you are recorded as having voted for Councillor yeah. B. Um, I said, I'd like to, Madam Clerk, I'd like to change my vote to Councillor so and so, and then that could make five, and, and then, then we'll make the and then somebody else might change. I mean, it was a mm -hmm. really absurd little circus that was carried out uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. where they kept switching back and forth yeah. and back and forth and back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't get settled instantly. But the thing is, ultimately, yeah. when there are five, and if the, ga the clerk says waves, lifts up the gavel and goes and mm -hmm. goes click. Yeah. And, and by the, I think she usually maybe gavels three times. Yeah. That finalizes the vote. So if, if once they, they get, get five, that, yeah. now if they, if they can't settle, if they can't get five votes on it, then they still proceed to have city council meetings. Hmm. And they will probably vote for mayor at each of those city council meetings. Mm -hmm. But they can also carry on other business. It's just they, they will not have any city council committees appointed until the mayor appoints them. Um, right. Uh, and then what about school committee? Who on goes the school, to the school committee. Um, the acting mayor will, and the way so it is now, the, acting, the mayor? acting mayor will be the person who's senior, uh, the the most senior member, uh, in terms of service. Oh, Tim and Toomey. And that's Tim Toomey. Oh. It's been Ken Reeves for was for many mm. years when it was unsettled. This would be the first time Tim Toomey would then uh, serve as acting mayor, oh, until like such time <laughs> as the Maybe. mayor is uh, yeah. chosen. Oh wow! Well. Right and. And that, it was sort of a, it was an unsettled issue about whether the acting mayor um, could actually vote as a mm -hmm. member of the school committee or just serve as chair. But right. I believe the pattern in recent years has been generally accepted that the mm -hmm. acting mayor can actually exercise a vote uh, mm -hmm. during that time. Um, wow. Okay. Might, might choose not to if it's something controversial. Yeah, because right? I as don't a courtesy. associate Tim Toomey with the school committee. But, hey. Well, Tim Toomey started on the school committee. Did he? Okay. Yeah, he was when? originally elected in 1985. Oh. Uh, actually, oh, in the 1985 election, <laughs> it was Joe Maynard was elected, okay. re-elected, and then um, died before taking mm. the oath of office. And in the vacancy refill, Tim Toomey was uh, selected. And uh, so, so he... Was, he was inaugurated as though he had been elected initially. Okay. And so he served on the school committee for some, or until he ran for city council in 1989, so I believe. So just a couple terms, maybe. Yeah. If that, uh, yeah. Okay. And then I think a few years later, also. I think also, have changed since then, but hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's how it would play out. Sure. Okay. So well, hopefully so it, they'll get their business done. I mean, I'm, I'm not of the, I mean, I think it's really important to have a mayor who knows how to officiate yeah. uh, and run a good meeting. But, you know, I, to me, it's other than that, it's not that important. No. As long as it's somebody who most of the people in the city would be agreeable to. Right. I, I, would, I think it would be a terrible, terrible thing if the city, our elected representatives, uh, mm -hmm. chose a mayor who, who most of the people in the city had serious questions about. So, yeah. so you really would, it's much better to have a, more of a consensus person. Yes. So, you know, that's why people like Denise Simmons or David right. Marr tend to be pretty right. good choices for right. those. Right. But we'll sort of see how it goes. So, so what do we got left here? Well, we've got many things I know, there. But we uh, we'll save some of these for for left. other weeks. So, uh, what, what's the most interesting? I like the well. Yeah. You know, I, I was partial to them. Well, let's take, let's take a look here. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes we do talk a lot about elections. So let's see if we can actually make this well, happen no, here. That, right, that you did and we'll that do one. that here. Yay, yay. So one of the things I posted up on Civic Journal not so long ago was. Uh, just some analysis I did from the registered voter database and the history of who voted. Uh, so what I have here is, is um, these are just histograms that show the number of, the, originally these are, these are going to look almost identical because what you're seeing here are just the number of registered voters in, the, in the presidential uh, yeah. election of 2012 the number of registered voters in the municipal election 2013, these are supposed to look pretty much the same. 
Actually, let's see if but we this can... is age thing, though, so you didn't explain it's that. At, the bottom, yeah. you see, it's, it's in groups of it's different in, ages. It's in three-year three groupings. Year. The first, right. the leftmost is 18 to 20, then up to 23 right. and 26, et cetera, et cetera, they et cetera. Kind of die off literally yeah. at 90 So you see there's a real peak in terms of registered voters at the mm -hmm. very young, and then it kind of flattens out during the Middle Ages in there. Right, so, um, so you want if, me to go now? Yeah, if you just sort of scroll down, you'll see these are, the registered voters don't change that much from mm -hmm. year to year to year. Right. But now if you look over here, this is the one that's like right in the middle of the screen here now, it just shows the people who voted in the presidential year in November 2012, and you'll see that looks pretty similar to the profile for registered voted voters. Right, here. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. but then when you go to the municipal election years, so let's see, so yeah, so that's this one right here, voted to 2013, you notice that now the big peak is way, way in the middle of it down. Oh yeah, see to that? 65 years old. So the older people are interested <clears throat> the older in the people local. absolutely mm -hmm. come out to vote in the municipal elections, and the number of people, younger people, plummets, dramatically plummets. Um, if you go down a little bit further, <clears throat> you'll see here's the November 2014, oops, actually, right there, the top one right there. And again, you see it's still, it's dominated by people in the... Well, that's the 2013. Yeah, it's actually oh. the lower one right yeah, now right. here. Yeah. So it's a state election oh, for governor. So again, you see the younger people showing up right. to vote again, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, not as dramatically as in the presidential election year. Mm -hmm. And then back to the municipal election, where you see, again, it's really the province yeah. of the older voters. Yeah, age uh, 60 and above. Yeah. yeah. So we're down to our last meeting <laughs> minute, so we're going to end with All some right. graphs here. Yeah, what is this one? The very last one just showed a comparison between 2013 and 2015. The yellow gold is for 2013, mm -hmm. and you see the general profile of voters for the municipal election, mm -hmm. and then the blue is the 2015. And it's similar, but not quite yeah. the same. So okay. anyway... We're, we're, What's amazing is that out of all those registered voters, how many actually vote? Just absolutely. Kind of sad, so anyway, all that's up on the uh, Civic Journal website. Yeah. Um, I'll actually be adding in the, some of the presidential election oh, year graphs there just to enhance what's already there right now. But anyway, uh, we're kind of in our last few seconds here once again. So, so yeah. until next week, this has been another edition yeah. of Cambridge Inside Out.